Thank you. Uh, just I want to let you know if you see me nervous, just know that it's my first presentation in front of a lot of people and it's also in English. Um, I want to talk about using image segmentation to support open street map data generation. Um, I come from a background, it's, uh, I'm a PhD student, so as you can see, I come from a scientific academic background. I'm also an OpenStreetMap volunteer for HOT, GIS, a remote sensing analyst, and also volunteer in, in Africa. Uh, the background idea, I want to talk about um, why I choose to present this to you. Um, I'm a PhD student and three years ago when I started my PhD, um, I was between these two uh, things, automated mapping and manual mapping. And I realized there is a big, big gap between, between them. Um, the first year I told my teachers I want to um, use OpenStreetMap and free, free data to uh, map those remote and very poor area from, from the world, in, especially in Africa and Asia. And my, my teachers told me, uh, why OpenStreetMap data? Why do you know about OpenStreetMap data? Just read the literature, literature and the state of the arts and you will see that the, the data is not good. So uh, I had a very big question why they, this data is not good. So as I told you, the background idea was to ge generate data buildings in those areas where OSM data or either, other kind of data doesn't exist at all. Um, refugee camps, are, are areas exposed to natural disaster, poor areas like slums or other areas. So I wanted to do it manually using OpenStreetMap data, but my teacher convinced me not to do it because the data is bad. So uh, I'm supporting OpenStreetMap, and I think it's the best data we can use now after three years of PhD. And I just want to let you know why they say in an academic university background that OpenStreetMap data is not good. Of course, they talk about uh, HOT mixing maps. Um, they said this about the manual mapping, uh, that remote areas located in low and middle income countries lack data generating to OpenStreetMap initiatives, or they are just in a very, poor, a very rich country and uh, not in the poor countries. And also that OpenStreetMap are prone to various accuracy-related errors. So the biggest event they talk about is the earthquake from Nepal in 2015. Sorry. They said this, uh, that OpenStreetMap uh, contributors are very new to OpenStreetMap. They do their first edits. They are making mistakes because they don't have a geographical background and it's uh, quality, it's a very big, it's a major concern. So reading this, what you believe? OSM is not good. So for the beginning, I started to believe them. But now, in the second year of my PhD, I started to um, use automatic, uh, automatic methods to map uh, areas from satellite images and I talk about image segmentation. So as, as you can know, there are two kinds of um, automatic approaches, methods we can use, with using training sample and without training sample. So we all know about uh, methods that use training sample, it's about machine learning, uh, deep learning, and it's true they have a very huge accuracy, over 95%, and the problem is that they need a lot of training sample. If we don't have a lot of training sample, uh, the results are not, are not good. 
Also, they, they don't have transferability. If, for example, we train an um, algorithm in US or in Europe, we cannot use the same parameters with the same tra training sampler to map the houses in, I don't know, South Sudan. It's not working. About the methods that work without training sample, um, there are a few. The most important is Oba called Obaya. They not, don't need training sample, but also the accuracy is not so high. So after I read this, I realized that even automatic methods still need, they still need human knowledge or data. So what was my idea? And for the next uh, 10 minutes, I want to talk about this, was to develop transferable method that can extract building for, uh, from free images, RGB images, with a high accuracy, without using uh, people for the, from the beginning. So let's say we have a tool and we can extract maybe 50% or 40% or more buildings from a huge area, huge image. Um, if we can do that automatically, uh, it's, from my point of view, it's very useful for the community to come and map the remain buildings. I think the process will be faster if the volunteer, the OpenStreetMap uh, volunteer, will not start from scratch. Um, and now we, we had a question, how accurate an algorithm can be? And to use the results, to use the building for uh, OpenStreetMap. So, Part of the PhD uh, study, we did some uh, small study case. We took a data set with 100 different images from US. You can see in this slide. Um, they are from US with a very high resolution, and they are also uh, free images, RGB images. So to test how uh, automated algorithm can work, we used three different approaches. Obaya, an op um, approach that uh, it works without tra training sample, a deep learning approach, and the last one, we combined them. So this is the first one with Obaya. We applied it for the the whole data set, 100 images, without training sample, we used image segmentation, a tool uh, called estimated scale parameter uh, to segment the image. As after we classify the image use, uh, using uh, geometry, brightness, and some texture rules, and then we, we saw the results. We validated using very no um, precision, recall accuracy, and F measure. The next one was a her glass shape network. Uh, it's a deep learning uh, method. We used 80% of the image images to train the, the images and with the polygons uh, provided in the data set. And after we predicted uh, randomly choose 20% of all the images from the data set and we, we validated them. The last approach was meant to see if we can combine uh, Obaya and CNN uh, and do it without training samples. So instead of using the provided uh, polygons from the data set, uh, we train 90% of the images using polygons resulting from um, Obaya. And we, need, we did the same for the rest of the uh, approach. So doing this, we don't need manual training samples. Uh, we use Obaya image segmentation from scratch to segment the buildings, and we can talk a bit about transferability. 
and here are the results. With ye yellow, you have the results, and with orange or red, uh, we have the reference data. And we can see that uh, using OBIA, we have an accuracy pretty high, over 93%. And it's important to, to say that uh, we applied the same rule set, rule set of, uh, on the whole uh, data set, different images, and we didn't use training sample to reach this accuracy. Uh, Hogla shape network, CNN approach, uh, we have here the highest accuracy, over 95%. And here is the last one, uh, with our approach. Uh, we have with blue the results and with red the reference data. And even from the scratch, without training sample, we, we managed to reach an accuracy over 93%. Uh, it's important to mention that this is a fully automated process. And just to jump to conclusions, uh, in January, or I don't, I don't remember exactly when, when I read, when I saw the email with uh, OpenStreetMap conference requirements, I, I read there that uh, you are looking for presentation that talk about scientific application of, of OpenStreetMap, uh, new approaches that facilitate or improve the data collect, collection or creating better connection uh, between the scientific community and open stream community. Uh, as I told, I told you, I'm the second year of my PhD and I believe that OpenStreetMap is the best, uh, the best data to use. And here I came with my, uh, my idea. Of course, I talk only about the automated uh, process but uh, I want us to think about it, if we can use it somehow to uh, generate data that can be useful for uh, OpenStreetMap community. And here I don't want to talk about uh, low accuracy data. Uh, if our data, for example, is over 95% accuracy, and we consider it it's good, and with our algorithm we can map even 20% of uh, area automatically. I think it's uh, improvement, and we, it's important that the volunteers who can who come after to map the area they don't start from from scratch and they have a background. Uh, I told you I'm a humanitarian mapping. So I was thinking if I take a random task from uh, HOT uh, task manager and uh, I will apply our algorithm, how useful we, it will be. This is our plan next to test, to test these things. So if you have any suggestion, they are welcome. So if you map the area using automatic tools, even as I told you, 50% or less or more of the area, and then the volunteers come to map the rest of them. Um, this is going to reduce time, maybe will improve accuracy, and also the most important for me, uh, this will create connection between the scientific community and OpenStreetMap community. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting presentation. Very promising approach. I think this is one of the uh, very uh, popular topic, which is discussed very often on different mailing lists, especially on the hot mailing list. Are there any questions or comments? Um, when you check what it's done afterwards, is there a way of feeding the errors back in to improve the training? Sonny, can you? 
when, when you check the output manually, is there a way of using the errors that you spot to improve the training for the neural network? I, did, I think I didn't get you. Um, so using knowledge of what it's got wrong with the neural network, are you then able to improve the neural network to retrain it to avoid particular things? Or is it too opaque for that? To improve the, the neural network? Yes. Yeah, there is, there is a, a possibility to improve it. Uh, for now, we just tested, uh, just for this study, we tested just one uh, particular neural network and we just wanted to see um, the, the differences between uh, other, like cobaya, um, Method. Yes, so are your, are your metrics pixel based, meaning your precisions and recalls, you're measuring them based on the number of pixels? Uh, no, we uh, did it on uh, polygons. On oh, objects. per polygon. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, maybe tried to use the existing OSM data to train the neural nets? Why are you um, taking the approach of doing your bio generation instead of using what's already in there? That was, as I said, that was my first idea. And then my teacher came and they told me don't use it because it's not reliable. So uh, I have a colleague who did that too. Uh, he used um, OpenStreetMap data from South Sudan to train some uh, images to, to detect buildings and I don't exactly not know now that uh, the accuracy, but I think it was of over 90%. But uh, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, from my experience, I think that's a much better approach. I think there's even a paper that discusses yeah. the use of OSM data to train neural nets, which shows quite good results. Yeah, of course, there are many papers, but um, all the time at the PhD, you are told to do something new. Uh, thank you for the very interesting presentation back here. Um, I'm interested in, you know, um, your talk mostly about buildings. Um, did you think about any other types of objects that you could detect and would your approach work? Um, I'm mostly interested in um, Landfills, for example, uh, like areas that have a lot of trash. Um, I'm interested in having a map that would, you know, have have all the trash on it on the planet, basically. Uh, in my uh, university group, uh, we did it on roads too, uh, but it's the results were not good. Uh, but for me, I just do it on, on buildings because I started with slum buildings first and then I, when I live, I got into a slum, I, I decided that this is not going to work. So I switched a bit, but uh, this approach, we only applied it on, on buildings. And it's also important to mention that uh, it's not working on um, huge cities with very dense uh, buildings only in remote and rural areas. Other questions? Okay, I would like just to take the chance to, uh, remem to remind that tomorrow we will have an academic track exactly based on scientific or research applications of OpenStreetMap in room S1.3, the first floor. Uh, for the whole day. So if you are interested in such applications, just visit the academic track, which is, of course, on the program. No more questions, so we can close this talk. Thank you again, Emanuela.